Hi, it's Richard Dwyer. You can find me at richarddwyer.com. I'm a lawyer in Silicon Valley. Right, I represent a host of clients, including women seeking restraining orders. Right, I have prevailed at trial against the deeper pocketed spouse. I currently have a case involving a Silicon Valley executive against whom we got a restraining order and among the evidence that we presented at trial was evidence that when my client was driving the husband in the car behind her tried to run her off the road was literally trying to kill her I understand the husband has a great public image in Silicon Valley my point to you is that violence can happen between two people who ostensibly love each other and that public image sometimes masks private personality and private reality. Now when I was a kid growing up in the 1970s, right, in an immigrant family in New York City, my father, who was the best father a guy could have, wanted me to have some great role models right so I grew up looking at other black men my father emphasized people like Flip Wilson this is back in the 70s Flip Wilson Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby actually did a few movies together some comedies Uptown Saturday Night Let's Do It Again a piece of the action movies named something like that right and of course in my family we saw all of them right Bill Cosby was an a-lister in the Dwyer household right I would argue that he was one of my father's favorite people my father thought Bill Cosby had a great image people might remember Bill Cosby in the 1980s as playing uh, Dr. Huxtable on the Cosby show and trust me that was a breakthrough for African Americans on TV right normally we were accustomed to seeing characters like Rooster the pimp in Beretta and suddenly here was an actor playing a doctor he actually had a family his wife was a lawyer he had kids you actually got to see him as a father and as a husband I'm not sure if much of America understood that there were millions of black men playing those roles every day right but let's pivot you know talent really is distributed randomly some people with a lot of talent notably comedians are troubled right laughter sometimes is both a shield and a sword you go through the list of some of the best comedians ever and you're gonna find real personal demons real personal problems right Richard Pryor Freddie Prince Robert Schimmel Lenny Bruce Paula Poundstone Cat Williams right we're laughing with these people when they entertain us but many times the people themselves are social outcasts or have problems adjusting we recently heard Jerry Seinfeld put himself on the autism spectrum right Seinfeld claims that sometimes he's in a room everyone is laughing and he doesn't get the joke now let me pivot further <clears throat> every adult has the right to decide whether or not they want to have sex right that should be basic that should be understood right if it's unwanted then it's unwanted right rape is rape whether it's in a relationship or out of a relationship right whether it's on a date 
whether you've agreed to kiss the other person to just kiss the other person right rape is rape all of us get to decide how far we want to go right just because someone is willing to go on a date with you doesn't mean they're willing to do anything else now according to reports more than a dozen women you've heard me right more than a dozen women have accused Bill Cosby of sexually assaulting them right and it's fascinating because understand this didn't happen at one event right this happened over time over several years right now Bill Cosby hasn't commented on it right recently a comedian accused Bill Cosby of being a rapist and Bill hasn't commented there's a simple reason why he hasn't commented why his lawyer has issued a statement that Bill doesn't want to dignify these allegations, right? But Cosby himself hasn't commented. And in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, the reason is a legal one. Right? Understand Cosby travels around. He's supposed to have been in New York. If you track these allegations, he's in New York. He's in California. Different jurisdictions have different statutes of limitation. But understand, while I'm sure most of the statutes of limitation for the sexual assault claims have expired, understand that if Cosby makes a public statement about any sexual assault allegation, he opens up a new period of limitations for a defamation lawsuit. In other words, if someone accuses Cosby of having sexually assaulted them in the 1970s or 1980s and Bill Cosby today says it never happened, that alleged victim can turn around and sue Bill Cosby today for defamation. That victim can claim that Bill Cosby is calling them a liar, is hurting their reputation, is damaging their public image by contending that they're the kind of person who would make up a sexual assault false allegation. Right? So for legal reasons, Bill Cosby is not going to comment on decades old accusations of sexual assault right understand too there might be another reason it might be and I don't know right but it might be that these accusations are true right let's just point out that if you track the accusations you're actually you're actually gonna see some similarities right younger women at least two of these women are teenagers at the time of the alleged assault right Bill Cosby portrays himself as a mentor as a role model as someone who is helping the woman in some capacity Right? Might be offering career advice, might be offering life advice, might just be a friend who is there to listen. Right? Then the woman comes to. That's how bad it is. Right? The woman comes to, and her clothes are tangled. Right? She realizes that 
she has just been assaulted in at least one case right Bill Cosby is hovering over the woman when she comes to right the woman knows she hasn't consented to any kind of sexual interaction right the woman then remembers back to having received something from Bill Cosby right a drink um, pills something that the woman later then believes was a drug right there's a great article it's on the root.com a website I recommend it's written by Daniel Belton right again her name is Daniel Belton the name of the article is Bill Cosby comedian philanthropist but rape allegations won't go away I would encourage you to Google that article it has a timeline what you're gonna find out is that Bill Cosby was sued by a woman right who wasn't a teenager right she, he was sued by a woman in the mid 2000s right let's say 2004 2005 now understand Bill Cosby went to Temple University the woman who sued him was the director of operations for Temple's women's basketball team right she alleges that she went to Bill Cosby's house to talk to him after all Cosby is a noteworthy Temple alum right Cosby was also a friend of hers she claims that she was stressed out she was looking for career advice right she claims that as they talked and the fact that she was stressed came out Cosby offered her three blue pills right three blue pills the next thing she knows she's woozy she's dizzy she's struggling right Cosby helps her over to a couch right as they go over to the couch Cosby then according to the allegations starts fondling her breasts right rubs his manhood up against her hand and then digitally violates her right these are according this is according to her allegations now understand in her lawsuit she sought a hundred and fifty thousand dollars for assault and battery folks that's not a lot of money that's not someone trying to become a millionaire off of a lawsuit understand that her lawyers then started uncovering the other women who had alleged that Cosby had sexually assaulted them understand that Cosby ultimately settled that lawsuit understand what happened too. some representatives of Cosby tried to make the claim in I believe a publication perhaps the National Enquirer that this woman was trying to extort Bill Cosby the woman sued them for defamation that's what can happen if you then after the allegations try to discredit the alleged victim right just understand that Cosby settled the lawsuit the women who the other women who were alleging sexual assault in the past they never got the opportunity to appear at trial to tell their stories now for me the most jarring story the one that stands out the most for me is among the 13 women there is a woman who claims that she had an affair with Bill Cosby right a consensual affair with Bill Cosby 
in, I believe, the 1980s or sometime like that. Now, the reason why her allegations are interesting is she claims that it's when the relationship broke off that suddenly she came to in a car with her bra undone and her clothes disheveled. Right? She's convinced she was sexually assaulted by Bill Cosby. If so, that establishes the MO, doesn't it? This is a woman by her own admission who is voluntarily with Bill Cosby. And then when things go south, suddenly she comes to in a car disheveled. Right? She believes she was drugged. Aren't you a bit disturbed that so many different women, even a woman who admits to having a relationship with Bill Cosby, have similar tales of waking up drugged. Aren't you concerned that the woman who sued Bill Cosby openly says she received pills from Bill Cosby and keep in mind she didn't black out. While she's woozy, she contends she saw what Bill Cosby did to her. Let me make another point. Whenever someone comes forward in any case with memories of something that happened in the 70s or 80s. Sometimes critics will say, oh, they're making things up. They're jumping on the bandwagon, right? We didn't hear about this in the 70s and 80s. We're hearing about this now because now it's fashionable, right? People have turned against Bill, so now this person's just coming to pile on with allegations that might or might not be true. But let me tell you, understand that some of these alleged victims told friends at the time, right? There's a teenager from the 1980s who told her agent at the time, who told friends at the time. Understand chronologically, there's no way she could have known that years later there would be a lawsuit filed against Cosby for an event that took place years later that also included allegations that Cosby drugged the alleged victim. Right, so take a hard look at the Cosby case. Understand this too. People hire attorneys, trust me I know, <laughs> right, to make statements in public judiciously using language to address allegations they can't address themselves. Right? You might actually hear about statements from John Smith, one of Cosby's attorneys, right, who claims that these allegations are decades old. And, um, you know, who claims that Cosby doesn't want to dignify the allegations. Those statements don't tell us much, do they? Right? Cosby obviously doesn't want to be confronted in a court proceeding by any of these alleged victims. Understand, too, the people who make a decision on whether to file criminal allegations in many jurisdictions are the prosecutors, right? The state. But understand, a civil defamation claim can be filed by the alleged victim themselves. Understand, too, that back in the 70s and 80s, many lay people didn't know about DNA. Right? You know, a 19-year-old who is alleging that she was victimized by Bill Cosby may not have kept the clothes she was wearing that might have DNA on them, right? Might not have gone to 
a hospital to have a rape kit performed on them. Understand too, a common thread in all of these stories is the fact that Cosby is alleged to have gotten each of these alleged victims alone, right in one-on-one -on -one situations. Now let's think this through. Understand how hard it is to frame a public figure, right? If I were to claim that, you know, Halle Berry sexually assaulted me and 12 of, you know, other men, right? I would have to be able to show that Halle Berry was with me and with the other guys on 13 occasions. Understand, public figures tend to have ironclad alibis, right? Because public figures are out making public appearances. You don't even know what city a celebrity like Bill Cosby is going to be in on a given night. Understand, with these alleged victims, they're able to place Cosby with them on specific time periods, right? Cosby can't even issue a public statement saying, I wasn't in New York when this alleged sexual assault took place. Why haven't you heard any statement like that? Right? Why haven't you heard that Cosby was in a different part of the United States? when an assault in Los Angeles is supposed to have taken place. Those are the kind of things to look out for. Why hasn't Cosby's attorney made statements like that? Wouldn't that go to the heart of the matter? Right? You have to ask yourself, when someone alleges that they were given three blue pills in your house by you, and then sexually assaulted. Why aren't you able to say that person wasn't in my house? Maybe you can't say it because factually you can't say it. Right? So take a hard look at this Cosby case. As I said before, I don't know what the full truth is. But let me just say, it really is hard to believe that 13 women randomly would come up with such similar allegations against the same popular celebrity. Right? It's just hard to believe. Such a coincidence, quite frankly, would be off the charts. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for all of us in the comment section to this video, right? Let me know if there are any facts we've gotten wrong here. Let me know if there is any exculpatory evidence or any evidence that implicates Bill Cosby that I haven't mentioned here in this video. Understand too, if anyone were to come forward with false allegations against a deep-pocketed public figure, that person would run the risk of being sued by Bill Cosby for defamation. Right? Understand that hasn't happened here, has it? Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.